Let's talk Republican about the state. vice presidency, because you just said that you would be willing to serve in a Trump administration. Had you been vice president on January 6, 2021, what would you have done? I would not have done what Mike Pence did. I don't think that was the right approach. I specifically stand by what I said on the House floor, and I stand by my statement. So that is Elise Stefanik, who I will remind you at one point, not too many years ago, was considered one of the reasonable Republicans. She was not considered one of the Marjorie Green esque MAGA radicals. That isn't who she was, but it is who she has become willingly, intentionally, specifically to get Donald Trump to consider her for the VP slot. And this is the exact sort of situation in which she has to pretend that that's what she would have done. It might well be what she'd do in the future if she was VP, but that's not the position that she had on January 6th at that time. And in fact, she was questioned about the fact that she had been pretty clear that it was a horrific event, but she is now trying to rewrite the record. Take a look at this. You deleted a, a statement that was on your website recently calling January 6th. It's publicly 6th a available. Day. Why, why was it deleted though? I, I have all my public statements from the current Congress. You can access all of my previous public statements. But why was it deleted from your website? I only have the press releases from this current Congress. All of those statements are available since I was elected on multiple social media accounts, and you can access it there. Just so like it wasn't everyone a retraction can. of what you said. I have every. No, certainly not. I have press releases for this current Congress, and the reality is, you as a journalist can go through all of my official social media accounts and find all of my previous statements. I, I love that. I love that you would have a position. You would be one of those Republicans and there were a good number after January 6th. You said this is a tragedy. Some of them directly said it's Donald Trump's fault. Now, you don't want that to be the focus, what people think of when they think of you because you're trying to get Donald Trump to like you. So you go to delete it. And that would normally seem to be a thing where, well, people can still potentially find it and that makes you look bad. So you get out in front of that by saying someone could still find it. Well, yeah, that's that's how the internet works. It's hard to utterly delete something from everywhere, but you are still to the extent that you can trying to do that. But she's acting as if because she is incapable of wiping it entirely from the internet, that that means she's not trying to rewrite history, that she's not being dishonest in some way. And maybe that's a small issue in comparison to the fact that she is now saying she would overturn the results of an election if that's what it took for Donald Trump to win, Brett, but what do you think? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like her defense is that, well, uh, yeah, they haven't deleted the internet, so I'm above board. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if you can find it, that's like, that's like someone like hiding the evidence somewhere. They used to have the evidence front and center. Here's the evidence, and then they hid it under a bush, under a rock in the backyard, and they're like, well, there's still evidence if you go look for it. <laughs> yeah. That's her argument. It's insane. Look at her. She didn't used to dress like that. She didn't used to do her hair like that. She used to look like a normal person, like that you would see walking around, like, oh, in the halls of Congress. She has completely embraced someone who's, you know, embraced the Trumper persona. This is someone who used to say that Trump was a misogynist, that he was soft on Putin, that he needs to release his tax returns. She used to say that. She is on yeah. record saying that. But, and she said that January 6th was bad because, and, and that's the point we need to hang the lantern on. All these people who for years had already said, all right, Donald Trump, we got to embrace, we got to just eat it. We just got to eat what he gives us. We got to stomach it. We got to say everything's great. This terrible stuff he's saying, we have to say it's great. And then January 6th happened. And that was so much worse than what they had been, you know, eating for the last five, four years that. About January 6th, they were like, sorry, this is bad. I have to say it's bad. Everybody needs to say it's bad. There's no way we could ever in a million years say that it wasn't bad. Yeah. And then nothing happened. And three years later, they're literally saying it wasn't bad. Or it they're like, bad. it looks bad on me if I leave evidence of me having said it's bad anywhere anyone can find it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna read her statement uh, or part of it in just a sec because you are going to see why she wishes she could erase this from the internet. But I just I just want to briefly mention like like I know that I should be I should be so used to this. We cover this news every day. We have to look what what people like this say every day. But it is still it is still wild to me that a person can be like this. Yeah, she 
completely changed everything she believed about so for, for like fundamental bedrock things about democracy, about political violence, because she is desperate to be the VP, a position with very little power. Except maybe she thinks that Donald Trump will keel over and she'll become president. It's it. It's I I know that people throw away throw these terms around. It is sociopathic. It is insane the extent to which they are willing to risk other people's lives so they can have the job they want. She's already a congressperson. She already has political powers. She's already being interviewed on the news. But she'd like a better office and you know, maybe America's no longer democracy if that's what it takes, but that is she's perfectly comfortable with that. This is the yeah. Now, this is this is why we like John. I'll just say that. This is why we this is why we need John. This is why we like John. Like people like me and Anna are dead inside and are like, ugh, these people. <laughs> it's just how it is. But like John is such a dear heart that he's like, it are you guys seeing this? We accept <laughs> that it's gaslighting. We're like, all right, how do you play the game back so at them? John's just like, this is not it? okay. How right? Could, <laughs> how could you just lie? <laughs> How could you just say the thing that you know is not true? <laughs> but I will leave you with this. This is a powerful statement from a person who once had principles and she used to be known as Elise Stefanik. Yeah. This is truly a tragic day for America. I fully condemn the dangerous violence and destruction that occurred today at the Capitol. Americans have a constitutional right to protest and freedom of speech, but violence in any form is absolutely unacceptable and anti-American. The perpetrators of this un-American violence and destruction must be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Then she talks about how she's safe. Thankfully, they weren't killed. But thank you to all those who protected the people's house and the American people from these dangerous destructive forces who might have killed her if they could have. But now they're political prisoners, let them go. They did nothing wrong. I'd really like to be VP. That is that is the class of people that are in our politics. We as kids perhaps were told that you should you should start from a position of respect for these people. Not at all. You should start by assuming they're the most dishonest sociopathic people in American life. They flock to this world because for some reason it's a place that they do well for themselves. But we should approach every one of these people with 10 times as much suspicion as we already do.